Hello, creative friends, and welcome to the Stamping Squad. My name is Cheryl Dorsey. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and today is Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. Today, I am going to show you how I made this cute fun fold card. I love a great fun fold, and this one is really awesome. So the front panel here with the DSP and the stamped image. And then if you open that up, then you see the second panel, another stamped image. And then you can open it all the way up and there's my sentiment at the bottom. And so this card is super cute and it will stand up if the person that you send it to wants to stand it up and display it, it will do that. So let's get started um, talking about this card. This particular card, I used the Silly Goose stamp set, and that stamp set is in the current mini catalog, the January to April 2023 mini catalog, and here's the stamp set, Silly Goose, and I love it. I think it's so adorable with all of these geese, so that's what we're going to use today. And then the designer series paper that I used is called Dandy Designs, and it is part of Celebration. You know, um, Celebration is getting ready to end here in just a few days on February 28th, and this is the Dandy Designs paper pack. It's got 48 sheets of 12 by 12 designer series paper, so it's a huge paper pack and lots of great colors for spring. So that is the designer series paper. I'm also using um, Fresh Freesia, Fresh Freesia cardstock here, in addition to the basic white. Let me show you all the pieces you're gonna need to make this card. First, you need a piece of basic white cardstock that's four and a quarter by 10 and a half. And this, I've already scored it. It's scored at two and a half three and three quarters, six and three quarters, and eight. So that's all the scoring. We're gonna fold that in just a minute. And this is just the regular basic white cardstock. It is not thick basic white. Sometimes when I'm making a card and I'm using white as my base, I will use the thick. But because this has so many folds, the thick makes it too thick. Um, it just makes it too bulky and it doesn't want to um, fold and lay down correctly. So the next thing we need, two pieces of cardstock. And as I said before, I'm using the Fresh Freesia. It's four inches by four inches. And then finally, two pieces of designer series paper, three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then the rest, um, just some scraps that we're going to use to finish off our card. So I'm just gonna set this step aside for a minute and let's do some stamping first. So I'm gonna grab some scrap paper so I don't mess up my work surface here. And this is just a scrap of basic white. And I'm going to start with this image, this cute little goose and there's a frog on her back. She's in um, a colorful inner tube floating in the water. I think that is so clever and, and really kind of funny. Um, and the one thing I did want to mention about this stamp set is, you see I'm using the red cling stamps. This stamp set is also available in photopolymer. So you get to choose if you want the red cling stamps or the photopolymer stamps. So if you're ordering this, make sure that you look carefully and you choose the correct item number to get the correct type of stamp that you want. So I'm just gonna stamp in my uh, Memento Tuxedo Black and the lid is very tight today. <laughs> so I'm gonna ink up my stamp There we go. And then I'm just gonna stamp this on my white cardstock. So down and I'm just gonna put a little pressure on it and then straight up, there we go. And the other stamp I'm going to use is this one, the deck with the balloon, because this is gonna be a birthday card. So, um, and the interesting thing about this is 
you'll see I'm only going to use this part of the image. I'm not going to use the body and legs. So it's only this part. So let's ink that up. I don't need to ink up the whole thing, but I do want to make sure that I ink up the part that I am going to use. So let me put that just right here, down, and up. There we go. And now you'll, um, you'll notice that I colored these. So this stamp set is one for coloring. So if you love to color, you're gonna love this for sure. And I'm not gonna make you watch me color <laughs> both of these images today, because that would be a lot. But I am going to tell you uh, what Stampin' Up! blends I used. So I did use Daffodil Delight, light and dark. I used Granny Apple Green, light and dark. Pool Party, light and dark. Fresh Freesia, light and dark. I'm running out of room here. I love my Stampin' Blends though, so I love coloring when I can use those. And then I also used the um, light gray granite. So those are all the ones I used. And then I also used my color lifter. So if you're um, an experienced colorer with the Stampin' Blends, you already know about the color lifter. But um, just in case you don't know about it, uh, we wanna show, show you something here with that. So let me move all of these out of the way. And this is the light gray granite. And I'm just gonna take this and my goose is gonna be white, but I wanna add just a little bit of shading. And so I'm going to go, actually I'm gonna turn around this way because I can see it better. But I'm just gonna go kind of along the underside of her neck very lightly to create a little bit of a shadow. Now, that would be fine. I went super light, did not apply, apply a lot of pressure. Let me bring this up here. Hopefully it'll um, focus for you so you can see this little line of the gray granite. But if I wanted to soft, soften that up even more, I could use my color lifter. And what I would do, I would just take it and run it right along the edge of that gray that I put in there. And that is going to blend it just a little bit more, make it just a little bit lighter. It does lift the color. I'm just gonna let it dry for a minute here. And then I'm gonna bring that up and you might be able to tell that this is even a little bit lighter. So it makes it very subtle. So the color lifter is great. If you're trying to lighten um, something that you've done with your Stampin' Blends, it's very good for that. The other thing that it's good for is sometimes when, um, when I'm coloring, I don't know if you ever do this, but sometimes I will um, accidentally color outside of the line just a little bit, just get a little too close to that outer line and a little bit um, bleeds over to the outside. The color lifter is also very good. If you go over that, it will at least make it lighter and sometimes it will remove that color completely. So no one has to know that you uh, missed the mark just a little bit and got outside the lines. One more tip for using the blends with an image like this where you might be coloring things that are quite small. I mean, it's one thing, like um, on this, I just colored this whole area in pool party. That's pretty easy. But when you see some of these little tiny things like the flowers or the frog, it's not as easy, right? It's not as easy. So what I have found works for me is I just take the blend and instead of coloring like this, I am going to basically dot the color in there and I'm going to barely touch the paper. So for instance, I'm going to dot, dot, just a little bit in there. And then the next petal, dot, dot, couple more dots. And that's how I can stay in the lines. If I actually try to put the 
tip of the marker down on the paper and move it around, I, I'm gonna have ink everywhere. So on these really fine images, the little dot dot with just the tip, just barely touching, works for me. So if you've got some tips and tricks that you like to use when you're using blends, put them in the comments so I can see them because I love any tips and tricks I can get. And also um, others who may be looking at the comments would um, love to see those too, I'm sure. So I'm going to now stamp my sentiments. The first one says, a silly goose told me it's your birthday. So I've got a strip, just a scrap of basic white. And let me grab my ink again, my ink pad. Here it is. And I wanna ink up the stamp. And I'm gonna take a look at it and see if it looks like it's, <clears throat> excuse me, if it's inked up enough. Looks like it could use a little bit more. I'm gonna move this down because my strip is kind of narrow here. So I'm gonna make sure that I actually get on the strip. There we go. And hold it in place for just a minute and then lift it up. Yay, that's good. It's even straight. <laughs> so uh, that's very good stamping for me. A silly goose told me it's your birthday. This one that says, sending gaggles of good wishes, I'm actually going to stamp on the inside of my card. So I'm going to bring this piece of cardstock over here. And the inside, or the last panel of my card, is this one right here. So I'm just going to stamp this right down in the corner. Right here. Sending gaggles of good wishes. I have um, good luck with stamping today. I'm doing good. Yay. Some days, I don't know. Some days are not as good as others. But today seems to be one of my best. I guess I should do a lot of stamping today. I'm going to pull that off. We don't need that. And let's go ahead and start building our card. So I'm going to grab my pieces of Fresh Freesia and my pieces of Designer Series paper and glue these together. And actually, this one I'm going to glue like that. So I'm using my multi-purpose glue. This is brand new, so let's see. Yes, it comes out very easily. So I want to make sure I don't use too much here. And then I'm going to lay this down on here. And then the glue gives me just a minute to make sure that I've got that straight. So I appreciate the grace of the liquid glue. <laughs> and now this one. Let's put just a little bit in the middle. So, um, do you guys love fun folds? I really do. And I like easy ones. I mean, sometimes I might want to do a really complicated one, like really impressive one. Uh, but most of the time, I like the more simple ones. But they still look very fancy. Um, so if you love fun folds, I'm going to link right up here in the corner to my fun fold playlist. So after you watch this video, um, be sure and hop over there because I have several different fun folds over there that you might like as well. All right, let's get the bone folder and start burnishing. I got something on there. I'll have to get after that with my um, adhesive eraser when we're finished here. And just, this is kind of like an accordion fold. We're just going back and forth, back and forth. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead 
and adhere these panels to my card. And I think I'm gonna do this one first. And so it's only going to be glued from here over. I don't wanna put glue on this part because it would glue my card shut. That is not what I want. So I am just going to flip this over. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but right here is where the fold is. So I just wanna make sure that I don't take any glue past that. And I'm not even gonna go right up to it because I don't want the glue to kind of squeeze out when I press this down. So there we are, and that simply goes right there. And I'm kind of looking at my margin here, top and bottom, and here right before that crease and center it in there. I'm just gonna use my bone folder to make sure that I have this stuck down really good there. And now it's time for this one. And so again, the same kind of idea, this is where the crease is, so I don't want to glue past that point So let me just hold it here. You could use a pencil or a pen and put a little mark there. And then um, you wouldn't have to hold it in place like this to remember where to stop your glue. All right, and again, I'm just looking at my margins, top and bottom and the edge over here. I'm kind of looking to make sure that it creates a nice line to the next panel, right? That helps to make sure that I have it straight. Let me press that down again. And then that is going to fold just like this. Okay, I'm gonna set that over there for just a minute. Now, remember our stamped images that we had just a minute ago? Where did I put them? Here they are, stamped images. So before I came on today, I went ahead and stamped images just like this and then colored them with all of those blends that I showed you. And then I used two of the stitched shape dies, two of the circles, to cut out those two images. So um, any, any kind of dies, any kind of punches, you could cut it with your, um, with your paper cutter, however you want to do your images, and then that is what they look like. So we're gonna put these on. This little guy goes on the inside. Now I just want to make sure that when I put him here, he's not going to be showing, right? We don't want that. That doesn't look very good for the front of the card. Although if you did it kind of like this where he's peeking out, that might be kind of funny. But I'm gonna have him hidden here. So I'm just kind of making a mental note of where not to go. <laughs> Again, that crease is right there, so I can refer to that. But I'm just gonna glue this down. So a little liquid glue. And I'm gonna put that right there. Press it down. And when my card is closed, you can't see him. So he will be a little surprise. This I am going to put on the front of the card, right? And I'm actually gonna use dimensionals for this, but I wanna go ahead and figure out what I'm doing with my sentiment. So the first thing I know that I want to do is I'm gonna trim this on the end at an angle just to give it a little bit of interest. Let's move that out of the way. And then I'm gonna trim this a little bit too. We don't need miles and miles on the end of that. I also have a little piece of the Fresh Freesia cardstock. And I am going to layer 
this piece on there. So let's do that. So I do want to say, if you're new to the Stamping Squad, welcome. We love welcoming new members. And also, I want to make sure that I told you, um, on, when I'm on YouTube, it is pre-recorded videos, but I do live events on my Facebook page. So if you like live events, then at the description underneath this, you might have to tap or click on the word more, and it'll show you all the information about this card, everything you need to make it, all the measurements, all the good stuff. Um, it also has the link to my Facebook page and my Instagram account, so you can hop over and follow me there as well. So this is kind of how I want my card to look. So again, I'm gonna glue this down. I don't wanna go past that second O, basically. So I'm just gonna kinda hold it right here. Put some glue on here. I'm gonna glue this down and then we can use our dimensionals. So I'm gonna hold this just so I kinda know where I'm going. I think that's going to work. Press down. Let's grab some dimensionals. We're almost finished. We're almost finished. So tell me if you like the geese. I do um, love most of the animal stamps from Stampin' Up. I like animals, so I like animal stamps. And remember, this year, the mini catalog um, is only good until the end of April. So it is a four month catalog instead of a six month catalog. So don't wait till the last minute to get the things you want to get from that catalog. If you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. And the link to my website is also down in the description. Please feel free to leave me comments or questions. I love it when you do that. I like responding to you. There we are. So cute. All right, let's put just a little bit of bling. I'm gonna grab my iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. And I've got my take your pick tool. And let's see, how do I wanna do this? I think I'm just gonna put them out here. I'm gonna do one down here. And then I think I'll do two smaller ones up on this part of the card. One there and one more. right there. So that gives it a little lift, a little bit of bling, a little extra interest. And that is our card. As Silly Goose told me, it's your birthday. And then we have this cute fella with the party hat and the balloon. And then at the end, sending gaggles of good wishes. So adorable, not a hard card to make. And you can make this card with any stamp set any paper you like. You just take the measurements and make the card base and make the panels and then you do you, do you as they say, and make this anything that you want to make it. I wanted to show you one other card that I made with this stamp set. And where is it? <laughs> it was here on my work area. Oh, there it is. Oh my goodness, They're crazy. Here's another one that I made. 
Um, so this is the Beautifully Happy stamp set. And this is a celebration item. Remember, celebration ends in just a few days, February 28th. So if you're looking to get free products, paper, stamp sets, be sure you get your orders in so you can choose your free products. But this is what I used. Again, I used that same Dandy Designs paper. And look how beautiful. I just love that stamp set. I think it's so nice. And then on the inside, sending happy thoughts. And at the end, for a very happy birthday. And here, I didn't I didn't stamp directly on the cardstock. I actually made a little banner that was just like this little banner. I thought that would be kind of interesting to have those two little matching banners. So that is card number two. Let me grab card number one and bring it back. Card number one, card number two. Which one is your favorite? And tell me, do you have either one of these stamp sets? Do you have the Beautifully Happy? Do you have the Silly Goose? Uh, if you don't, I hope you at least get one of them because they're both great. They're both great stamp sets. Well, thank you again for stopping by. Jump over to my Facebook page if you like live events and leave me a comment. I can't wait to answer you. I hope I see you soon. Bye-bye.